give our drummers another hand. Yes, wow, what a blessing. So good morning, welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living North Jersey. My name is Reverend Evelyn Bourne and I will be your host today. So I would like to remind everyone and tell any new people that we are an open and affirming science, science of mind community where the vibration of love lifts you the wisdom of the ages inspires you, and the science of mind teaching empowers you. We believe that heaven and hell are states of consciousness that you experience in this lifetime. Um, you are the architect of your life, and it is never too late to know true happiness. Um, so I would like to thank um, our science of mind everyday host, the Reverend Don Lee. And um, yes. And um, now we have uh, an opening chant.
Oh, the sweetness and the sound of this vibration. I trust that it is reverberating through your body temple with such, such love. Let us take our attention for a minute or so and turn inward. Turn into that inner landscape, the place of all resources, of all power, of all healing, the place that exists within us that so often when we're busy we don't pay attention to. For the next minute or so, let's just close our eyes together. Go within and get present to <laughs> that which created all that is, that which loves you. And let's just bask in the depth and the beauty and the love. Oh yes, a vibration of love. <laughs> Let us sense and feel and reverberate with this vibration, trusting as it moves through our body temple that there is a good and glorious activity that is happening. It's the activity of healing and revealing. It's the activity of an expansion of awareness and inspiration and intuition. And this happens each and every time we turn our attention to that divine place that dwells within and without and around. There is simply no place, no time, no moment when we are separate from or outside of this. Let us feel blessed and let us be the blessing. For this, I am so incredibly grateful. And I surrender this word to love, to the law, and to the awe of life itself. Please join me in saying, and so it is. So it is.
Okay, so now it's time for our October affirmation. I am a powerful stand for truth, capable of recognizing my role and potency in being a loving change agent on this beautiful planet of ours. Spirit as me multiplies this good and ordains me to make a difference in the world using love. And so it is. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to offer us a peace practice for today. But I'd like to start it, and for those of you, if you're with us for the first time, don't feel obligated, but to me, Peace is most available when we are conscious and when we are available and when we are present for each other. So what I'd like to ask you to do, if you're comfortable, in silence, in silence, silence, <laughs> silence, I'd like you to just stand, if you will, and offer a hug or a namaste bow to everyone or anyone in the room that you're willing to, so that this way we make connection. We must make connection within our comfort zone, within our comfort zone. So please do, please. Hugs are allowed if you're open to it. <laughs> Why do we do this? Because love is present. And when we're greeting each other and we're expanding community, love is expanded. Why do I ask you to do it in silence? So you're not distracted with your personality. So you're not trying to be cute or smart or any of those things. Just so that you're connecting. Thank you. And so to extend our practice today, I'm going to ask you. Oh, OK. There we go. So what I'm going to ask you to do is also participate with our, with our little ritual. And I'll wait for everybody to be seated. And so if you will, join me in our ritual. Everything I see is sacred. Everything I see is sacred. Everything I hear is sacred. Everything I hear is sacred. Everything I speak is sacred. Everything I speak. Everything I feel is sacred. Everything I feel is sacred. All of life is sacred. All of life is sacred. Let's do that again, please. Everything, Everything I see is sacred. Everything, Everything I hear is sacred. Everything I speak is sacred. Everything I feel is sacred. All of life is sacred. Thank you. Most certainly what the world needs right now more than anything else is each one of us ah, to be present, to be present to each other, to be practicing compassion, and to see past the illusion of suffering that is so prevalent right now in so many forms. So good morning. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the uh, Reverend Dr. Michelle Wadley, for those of you who have not met me yet, and I am still currently the, the leading, um, they have a song, I have to sit down. <laughs> Every week I forget at least one song. Enjoy. It says it's exactly what it needs to say. You're perfect. <laughs> I am perfect as I am. I am God's unerring plan Even broken parts of me Make me who I'm meant to be 
when I'm in my darkest place. Something leads me to God's grace. And when tears and trembling hands, I remember whose I am. Friday night, we went, uh, I went with some friends and we went to uh, the Shanghai Jazz in Madison, um, not for the food, but we, <laughs> but we went for Ty and his band. And I got to tell you, here's the reason why you want to come on a Sunday and you want to hear the music live. And um, Desiree and I before were, we were relishing in the song, um, uh, what? Let It Be. We were, re they were rehearsing Let It Be. And she was like practically levitating, right? <laughs> and I have a similar experience because I remember the very first time I heard that song. I was in New York City. We, it was the year for those, only a few of you remember this. Raise your hand if you do, if you were around for the, the uh, Agape Choir when they came. Yeah, there's not many of us left that were there that long ago. And so it was a big, big story, and, and I won't go into that now, but we were over at the United Nations, and Ricky Byers had just really finished the song, but it wasn't quite done yet. And to my memory, it wasn't recorded yet. But there they were, there were hundreds of people and all sorts of um, international dignitaries, and there was Michael Beckwith giving an address on the main stage, and the choir was up in the loft. Ricky was downstairs, and and those of you who don't know, you just have to look her up. <laughs> and, and Ricky was down below, the choir was up there, and they started singing that song, and I just melted into the ground. And so the reason why I'm saying this to you is because you can hear a song on the radio, and you can buy a CD, you can do all that. That's great, and definitely support musicians. But when you have a physical experience, which is what happens when you are in person, you get a physical experience, that creates like this, um, uh, a touchstone inside of you. So that when you do go home, if you happen to hear that song again, you're not hearing a song, you're recalling a full body memory and experience. And if we've done this correctly, it's a full body experience of love. 
It's a full body experiencing of remembering that you belong. Because belonging is an important, incredibly important thing. And it doesn't require weekly visits. It doesn't. But it's good for those who are with us uh, for the first time who are not here yet. But what you want, and, and this, the, the touches that Clive, I don't know if you can appreciate it all. Not being a musician, I have great appreciation for nuances. Even though I'm not a musician, I, because it's the way it lands. and. The sounds, your sounds this morning behind me, Clive, thank you. It was just stunning, absolutely stunning. And that's what you want. You want your body. You want to, hi, Marilyn, I didn't see you come in. <laughs> and um, actually, I want to say hello to a few people. We haven't seen Elizabeth Shepard in a long time, a couple of years. Welcome. And it's good to see Dina. Hello, darling. And if you are with us for the first time, is there anybody, if, you're with, if you are with us, I know there are a few, we have some books on the back table and you're welcome to take a book for free, just as a gift from us. We, we're just glad you're here. The same thing can go for y'all drummers. If you'd like to take a gift home with you, we'd love for you to do that. So my point here is that this is not about showing up because you're trying to be saved. Mm. We are not here to be saved, which is contrary to much of your upbringing. That's okay, and it's even okay if that's still what it is for you. But we are here to celebrate. That's why we call it a celebration. And we're celebrating that place where the divine lives within. Yes? Yes. And that place, because it lives within, guess what? You are never away from it. Yes. You're never outside of it. You're never alone. Ever. I watch for I mean, if I'm if I'm, I might be rude right now, so just ignore me and just chalk chalk it up to me being Jersey girl, okay? All right, because I don't really want to offend anybody because I don't know what your backgrounds are. So please just bear with me. Laugh at me if you want. I don't mind that. I'm fascinated, and I watch sometimes. I'll go on uh, YouTube or something, and I'll look at some of these big preachers. And the last one I watched was Joel Olstein, And I'm thinking, wow, thousands of people, thousands of people, but they're convinced they need that. I don't think that he conveys the message that it's indwelling. So what tells me about our society is that we're hungry and we're not realizing we're carrying the damn power within. We're not carrying, they, or it is believed that it's not carried within. People believe that they have to be saved. They believe, they believe they're, they were born in original sin. Right? I mean, that's, that's true for many that you know. So, so I, you know, I would love to give up responsibility and say, Lord, save me! Because then I wouldn't have any responsibility. It wouldn't be mine to do. I could just chalk it up to, to the power that is and think, well, it, you know, it didn't tell me where to go. I, I, and, and so the, the, the title of today's talk was Hiding in Plain Sight, because what you're looking at is someone who looks pretty laid back and easy. As I am, I am a down, downright, I love God. And you can't tell that by looking at me because I'm kind of goofy and I'm irreverent and I cuss behind the scenes and you all know me and I tell dirty jokes. So, you, you know, so, but I love the presence and it is the only thing that carries me when, when things go wrong. And I say wrong, that could be anything. I remember one time my eldest son was living in Seattle at the time and suddenly he had a... I got a phone call at two o'clock in the morning and he had meningitis and one of his local friends called me and to tell me that he was taken to the hospital. Now, if you don't know about meningitis, easily, easily you could die from it or, or be left with many um, horrific um, side effects. Um, I was 3,000 miles away, give or take, and there was nothing I could do at that moment other than to turn to the power that has no circumstance, that has no, it can't be contained. 
I had to turn to prayer to know that I could support him from where I was at the moment until I could get a plane ticket and fly out there and there was nothing much I could do anyway. I of myself could do nothing. I could do nothing in the body of Michelle. So I need to be willing to develop or, or to lean into that relationship so that that relationship takes care of me when I don't have the power to take care of myself. And, but I'm not powerless. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying in, in, if it's my ego, and if it's my ego alone or, or the personality alone, yes. But I'm more than that. We are each more than that. Yes? Yes. And there is a, there's, oh my God, oh. I get so, it, it is so hard for me. My life has challenges. I have challenges. But never for a second do I think I'm alone. And I really struggle when I see you struggle. Any one of you, anybody. It's, one of the biggest things, Kathy Duke and I talk about this all the time, it's, it's, a, it's an, I have an issue with watching other people suffer. I don't like, especially since I know you don't have to suffer. You don't actually have to suffer. But I am fascinated by people who want an outside savior. I'm, and I mean fascinated, I don't mean critical of, I really don't, I'm just fascinated because here's what I know about that. It still works. You get that? Why does it work? Because you believe it. Because any time we have a belief in something, the belief is qualified by what we believe in. I love Ted Lasso. You all know I love Ted Lasso. Any Ted Lasso fans in the room? Oh, only a couple. Oh, yeah. my God. Please get Apple TV and watch Ted Lasso. It is the most empowering, uplifting, life-transforming, amusing, funny, irreverent TV show that you could possibly watch. You will get lessons like you can't believe from this show. And why did I just go on about all that? <laughs> right, but what about... Oh, 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 because they do this whole thing about believe, right? I bought an ornament for my Christmas tree. I do have a believe ornament. <laughs> so they have this thing, believe, but of itself, it does nothing. You have to understand that. To believe, you have to know what you're believing in. Your belief is what qualifies the power of believing. Is, is that obvious or is that clear? Am I getting that across? So if I, I watch, <laughs> I was watching some movie last night, something, some series, some, you know, Halloween, I do try to watch some scary things during the month of October. <laughs> I do. I just like to get into the mood of it. And, and there was this young girl that was brought up in a cult, in a sat satanic cult. And for her, it's perfectly normal. But so her belief in that cult, in that, in Satan, will give her whatever she believes in. Why? Because she believes it. So what, what is becoming more and more obvious to me is that I, I see that, I, I think we take this for granted. Even here in this community, I, sometimes I think we take for granted that we have this, this power that we actually don't have to activate, that we don't have to do something for. We don't even need a ritual. All that's required is that we stand in the presence and affirm our own being. Let's, let, then I don't want you to stand, but right now, just, just for the moment, close your eyes for just a moment, whether you're home on Zoom or here. Just close your eyes and open your hands. Open your hands as if you're receiving a gift and breathe and get that right there where you are there is a bounty of love of beauty of acceptance of compassion finding you right where you are literally right where you are and there's only one thing that's required 
to activate it. And it's your acceptance. So, if you're willing to accept this presence as your strength and your power, just whisper a sweet I accept into the room. Yeah. Thank you. That's what it takes. You can't be outside of it if you're willing to live with it. Now, when we, when we talk about, um, you know, and science, science has been trying to prove what we have known for a long time. They have all sorts of fancy language for it now. Some people love all that language, you know, the quantum, all the whole quantum theory and, and all stuff. It started with quarks. What is it with the cues in science? Because <laughs> years ago, we, a gazillion years ago, we, we talked about quarks and we did, had this great show, this thing that we did, the skit. Remember that? We did that skit for the quarks. Now we're talking about quantum theory. I, I, I don't know what that is. But the fact is science has been trying to describe what it is that we have known. And if you think that science is leading the way, think again. They're catching up to us. But they have better ways of describing it, speaking it, putting in books, and they have doctors saying it. So suddenly it becomes real. But it is as real for you and I as it is for every scientist. There's no scientist that knows more than what you know. If you lean into it, it is required. There is a, there is a price, and the price is you lean into it, that we're never outside of it. Yeah, they are, they are working to catch up with what we have known. So our job is to create a relationship with, and I know somebody literal here is saying, well, how can we, how can we have a relationship with that thing that dwells within? I know, I know. Mm -hmm. But I just bear with me with this language because all, English is difficult. But so it's not so much that I'm creating, it's not like I meet a new person, I'm trying to create a relationship with the unknown person. What I'm doing is I'm just activating it by saying yes to it, by accepting it, by allowing it. I walk the streets, I personally, I walk the streets knowing that this, this thing, that this thing that I'm talking about is so available. So when I see people struggle in their family relationships, which I'm so happy to say, out of the people that I know here in, this, in our community, I know that so many of you have done much to heal your relationships. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But it breaks my heart when I see you suffer. It does. It truly does. But what, what, what I want us to remember is I want us to remember that the suffering is optional, which might sound odd, but suffering is optional. It happens, but it's optional. It's because we have subscribed to it. When you're standing before a challenge, where does your mind go? Where does your heart go? When you're standing or you're suddenly in a challenge, I don't know, a relationship challenge, a challenge with your business, with your work, is money not coming in? You know, you, you have an ailment that, you know, suddenly has shown up. Where, where do you go? Pay attention right now in your mind. Where do you go? What resources, resource do you pull on when you're smack in the middle of this thing? So if you're stuck, in the diagnosis, if you're stuck that you think the other person is the problem, if you're stuck because you believe that you have a, you know, you have a germ, and not that we don't get sick, and I get sick, I'm not talking about that. Let's not go to extremes. But, um, but do you get stuck in the appearance, or do you have a way of opening up to the power that allows you to heal. And if you can't heal in the moment, if you can't heal dramatically, can you set yourself and your sights in that direction, walking one step at a time toward it? I know that over the years I've had things that have bothered me physically, I've had things that have bothered me, and so often, and I love this, and I'm now, I'm, you know, <laughs> 
When you give something a name, it becomes real. And I have been trying to say for years that even when you're experiencing something, I encourage you not to name it. Because when you name it, you create a relationship with it. And then it becomes more real. You get that? So sometimes I just, I, I've had things many, many years ago. I remember, um, God, this was a long time ago because I was still living in Florham Park. And something was happening to the bottom of my feet. I was in pain. I was in, like, every step I get out of bed in the morning would be like, like that kind of thing. I could barely walk the dog. Um, but Neil came in my life and he started walking the dog. So that was a good thing. <laughs> I don't know if he's watching, but. <laughs> um, but what happened was, so that my feet were hurting, and they, were, and they would hurt for hours in the morning and then stop hurting. So, but I know that all sorts of people offered me all sorts of names. They wanted me to name it, and I refused. And you know what happened? I walked until it was gone. I've had things happen with my back, with my hips, with my stuff. I don't know what it was. And I, when I say I don't know what it was, that's not true, because I always believe it's some kind of emotion, some kind of painful emotion that's being stuck in my body, and it's regurgitating through my body. Then it just chooses to land somewhere in my body. And I've had things, and I mean, there were times when I was living in Lincoln Park, I can remember like painfully rolling out of bed because of issues with my hips and my back. What did I do? I did not name it. I did not go out to get it fixed. I did my practices. And what happened to it? It left. You used to see me, those of you who've been around for a long time, you saw me walk into, the, into a Sunday with a cane, all bent over. You haven't seen me like that in years. I did not name it. You have to be careful because when you name something, that's how you create a relationship with it. Because you're immediately giving it a name which gives it power. You get that? If we want to, and, and there are some times you have to choose to. If, if you're having, you know, my son, it was shocking that my son, who, my one son who seemed like to be the healthiest of all of them, you know, he came down with diabetes and we were all like, diabetes you now you don't you got to be smart you can't be stupid you got to take care of yourself until you can take care of it here you got to take care of it here right you got it so you don't you don't just stop taking medication because oh Michelle says you, don't, you shouldn't be in pain that's not what I'm saying I'm not saying that I'm not saying not go to a doctor but I am saying that moving forward pay attention to what you name because when you name it it's claimed and when you claim it, there's a relationship with it, and then that relationship happens in your body temple. It happens there. So this community is a place where we can look at each other and go beyond those names and those claims. That's a beautiful thing. So when you, when you forsake, now it's gonna sound a little judgy here, if you forsake your God, if you forsake your, 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 even I'll say savior, if savior is what you have, when you forsake that power, that presence of the love within, and you forsake it by not turning to it, then you are moving out of that relationship a tad. Am I clear? Okay. So our job is to stay in relationship. Our job is to stay in relationship. The relationship with that which created all things. You know, there is, um, <laughs> there is a lot of wisdom and a lot of wisdom teachers. But I even know, I don't, I, I don't want to worship them. I want what they have. I got news for you. I don't want to just be impressed by them. Mm -hmm. I want what they had. I want the wisdom that drove them. I want the intuition that drove them. I want the inspiration that drove them. I want the actual nugget of source, if that existed. That's what I want. I don't want to just be saved by someone. I want to walk in my faith. Walk in my faith. 
walk in my faith. And so while I'm being this goofy, irreverent person, that's what's going on on the inside. So hiding in plain sight, I am absolutely a, um, a zealot of sorts. <laughs> I'm a zealot for the power of healing and presence, even though you might not see that by looking at me. And I'm, I'm okay about that. Although sometimes I think it'd be fun to have robes and a collar. <laughs> because then people, I, I would imagine it would bring out some really interesting conversations walking around <laughs> with a collar on. Here's what I want to leave you with. And I'm going to ask you to believe me. I'm going to ask you right now to believe me. And if you believe me, I would like you to affirm it with some, some, some whatever you want, however you want to affirm it. There is a power that exists everywhere. Yes? Yes. This power avails itself to you. Yes? Yes. This power avails itself to you as you. As you. Yes. That's that two letter word. That makes all the difference in the world. That's a qualifier. As is a qualifier. So this power that is available within is strong enough to be bigger than your problems, yes? yes. It's bigger than your issues. It's bigger than your struggles. It's bigger than your ill health. It's bigger than your lack. It's bigger than all of that. If you're suffering, you're not in relationship with it. If you're suffering, you're not activating it. Now, you can do it subtly. You could do it quietly. You, you know, like the different, there's different personalities here. We don't all want to do God the same way. But not doing it at all leaves you separate from it. So can you accept the presence as yours? Yes. Can you believe that you can be healed by your faith and conviction. And if you said yes, but you didn't really mean it, pay attention to that. <laughs> because one of the, besides wanting to leave here with you knowing that this power exists within, the other thing, you know what I want for each and every one of you? I want pure, 100% authenticity. I want to know that each one of you are willing to be you exactly as you are. I want, you, I want each one of us to stop pretending that we're something else or that we stop pretending to be nice when you're not feeling nice at the moment. Sometimes that happens. So I want to see us. I'd love to see a community grow where I'm going to love you even when you're feeling witchy, when we love each other, when we're in bad moods. That's a community of power. And that's culture, by the way. That's a culture that, that gets created. So if we want that culture to remain as the Center for Spiritual Living North Jersey, we have to live and breathe into it. Right? You got that? So I'm going to ask everyone to hold hands, please, as we affirm this. Let us know together that that power that exists exists as us. Yes? Yes. Let us know that that power is the power to heal, yes? yes? That power is the power to inspire, yes? yes. That power um, is your intuition, yes? yes? So as we accept and we speak yes into it, it is activated in us. I believe in the presence and the power by means of each of us without hesitation. There is no place to go where we do not have it. Oh, dear Lord, it is time for us to say, yes, I am worthy. I am valuable. I am enough. I am lovable. Why? Because it's the truth. Let us live and breathe into this reality. Oh, with a bounty of gratitude and faith and conviction. I surrender this word to the law that acts on our behalf no matter what. Thank you, Spirit.
And so it is. Thank you. So we have two more songs left in the service. And I just want to invite you, I want to just put the idea out there that the music is part of the spiritual practice of coming here. And I want to invite you, if you can, to get yourself up out of your seat. If you find a place that you think it's for singing along, maybe Ty will help you. Um, and next time we come back with the drums, I want you to get up. <laughs> and I want you to remember back to before COVID when we always had service in person and we moved with the music and we let the music go through, like you said, a physical experience. And then we had all that time we were just on Zoom. Ugh. We're here in person now. So I want to invite you to consciously take advantage of this in-person music that's in the room with you. Enjoy. So this is the song that Reverend Michelle was referring to earlier. It's called We Let It Be by Ricky Byers. Yeah. 
thanking you. Your body needed that. Yes. Your body needed that vibration and that love and that movement. Your body is thanking you. Thank you for participating. Thank you. That's it? Oh, Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I was like, oh, no, it's Evelyn. I wasn't supposed to be I know, up. I know, I know. Sorry. <laughs> like this. Everybody get up on your feet. See the light. Everybody do me. Everybody get up on your feet, see the light, everybody you meet, let us be reminded of who we come to be, we are love, we are one, one with family, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, 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 yeah, now you know what it's going goes like this, everybody get up on your feet,